Tonight, the Tennessee Titans are resuming play after a COVID outbreak forced the league to cancel the team's game last week. Several other teams have reported limited numbers of positive cases so far this season, forcing the NFL to alter schedules and threaten fines and more serious punishments for ignoring league rules on COVID. The Atlanta Falcons so far have been largely successful in containing the spread of COVID and just welcome back a limited number of fans into the stands for Sunday's game. Joining us now is the team's owner, Arthur Blank. He's also the co-founder of Home Depot and author of Good Company, sharing his roadmap for values-based business. Mr. Blank, thank you so much for your time and joining us tonight. Absolutely, Lindsay. Very nice to be with you. Thank you so much for asking me. So we'll get to the book in just a moment, but first I want to get your reaction to some news. As you know, these are unprecedented times for the NFL trying to play a season in the midst of a pandemic. New England Patriots player Jason McCourty said this week, quote, whether it's the league, whether it's the NFL PA, they don't care. For them, it is not about our best interest or our health and safety. He was responding to the Patriots playing a game just three days after a player tested positive for COVID. Do you believe that the league has put the health and safety of its players and staff first this season? Season. There's been something like 422,000 tests in the league, and I think that we have had um, maybe something like 40 tests that are positive. It's been a 0.6%. So I think credit to the players. The players have done a great job uh, in uh, in following the protocols and and watching, you know, their um, their behavior when they're back home, if you will, because we don't have a uniform bubble. Unfortunately, we have. Uh, We've had a real problem in the United States. We only have, you know, 4% of the world's population, but 22% of the world's deaths. So, you know, we have to become even more vigilant in every way that we can to protect ourselves and protect each other uh, in every way. And I know the NFL has done a great job in doing that. Now, the NBA contrastly just completed its time in a bubble. Obviously, these are two very different situations, but there were zero right. positive COVID tests in three months there. We're just five weeks into the NFL season. Numerous games have had to be rescheduled, and there have been at least 28 players who have tested positive, eight more just announced today. Would you say that this is sustainable, or is this only a matter of time until the league may have to suspend play? Well, I, I think it, you know, I, I would say this, the league has felt that, you know, once the team started to travel, that the challenge is going to be greater. Uh, and I think they are. And uh, we're all in the very tight protocols. And uh, and the league is, is, uh, has been really clear about the uh, about the punishment, uh, if necessary, that they would extract if, if, if necessary. And many argue the NFL has been rather slow to come around on the Black Lives Matter movement and calls for social justice from players like Colin Kaepernick. And certainly it has not been without controversy. Some teams have chosen not to take part in the national anthem at, at, uh, at all, calling the demonstrations a distraction from the game. But many players have been using their platforms to speak up this year. What changes have you seen over the years from the role of sports and social movements and what direction would you like to see them go? Well, I think I, I, I've always been very um, supportive of the players um, using their platform, whatever it may be, to uh, speak out on these issues, which are, are critical not only to them, but really critical to our, to our country. It's their First Amendment rights, and we want to support that. And they're helping bringing uh, more focus and more attention to these issues, which um, we've made much progress on. We have as a country. Uh, we have more work to do, uh, but we should celebrate at least to acknowledge what we have come through and the progress we have made. But it's going to take a uniform America. It's going to take America that works together. Mr. Blank, let's talk about you. Uh, your story is certainly an inspiring one, reinforcing the symbiotic relationship between working hard and doing good. Originally from Queens, New York, your father passed away when you were a teenager, and it, it was your mother who really showed do the power of speaking out for others while you hustled for a better life. Tell us more about your own experience in merging together the business worlds with social justice. And after decades of success, give us some perspective. Do you think that the country's wealthiest play a more active role or should play a more active role yeah. in lifting up others? You know, my experience with um, uh, giving back and being connected to the community. And, and I think even when we had, quote, no money, if you will, at all in our family, my mother was always involved in the community, always involved in matters of principle, always involved in speaking out, always trying to make a difference in the lives of others in every way that she could. So I think that permeated me from a very early age. But the notion of giving back and making a difference in the lives of others has always been something that's been woven into, into my fabric of my, my being. And um, I think as um, we started Home Depot in 1979 with our first stores, both my partner, Bernie Marcus, and I, 
um, have always had a similar background in that regard and always been blessed and great success this company which is now has a market value of 310 billion dollars or so um, we always felt that you know the third part of that was also to give back to community communities that we're in and communities ac across the nation and I do think uh, today Lindsay that our young people are demanding uh, and I use that word you know thoughtfully demanding uh, life that is not just a question of why am I here, but life is asking them, you know, you are here, it's a blessing you're here, what are you going to do during your lifetime to create a better environment for the world and for others that will come after you? So the book, Good Company, really talks about stories and relationships. It's all about relationships. It's about, you know, if you do the right things for the right reasons and, and you live with the consequences, you're going to end up being successful, end up having a purposeful life and making a difference in the lives of your associates, the people that you're serving, and the communities that you're living in. And, and certainly you do put your money where your mouth is. A very generous uh, philanthropist just gave $200 million to Children's Health Care of Atlanta for them to build a hospital. So we thank you for your generosity. Lastly, just want to leave you with this question. Right now, as you know, so many Americans are dealing with unemployment, underemployment, and over financial uncertainty. And you write about how if you hadn't lost your own job, you probably would have never gone on to found Home Depot. What advice right. do you have for people in this moment who are struggling right now or may feel their entrepreneurial spirit is being stifled my advice to anybody today is to uh, you know try to find something positive in your life you know, count your blessings you know you use that expression all the time but we all have blessings in our life and have a positive attitude and try to uh, find ways that creatively that you can whether start a new company, start in a new company, uh, move to a different industry, uh, use your talents, uh, use your positive attitude, um, use your own values in bringing that, uh, you know, to bear in any opportunity that you have. But I think this is a time to act as a neighborhood uh, within your family, within people that you're living close to, within, within your literal neighborhood where you all pitch in, you all support each other, you all find ways to get through this together because that's what America has done in the past. And we speak to the best of our, our citizens, the 330 million people that live in this country. When we're at our best, we're supporting each other, we're listening to each other, we're understanding each other, we're finding ways to be helpful to each other. We need to do more of that and less of the disparity and the, and the, um, the, the bitterness that we see in our current society today. Mr. Arthur Blank, businessman, philanthropist, and author. The book is called Good Company. Thank you so much, Mr. Blank, for, for sharing your story and your time with us tonight. Thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate you listening, and uh, I wish well to all of our listeners. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.